In this video, I'm going to show you an easy trick to put individual sign letters on a wall and make a template with your CNC machine and a plotting pen to ensure that your spacing and alignment is perfect every time. Okay, before we get into this, uh, yes, I am putting together a sign for our demo center and on the wall, but this is by no means a video that's intended to be a promotional video for Stepcraft. Uh, what I want to show you in this video is a tip that we kind of figured out that really saved us a lot of time when we're putting signs up on the wall that have individual letters. Okay, so basically what you see right here, this is, this is our, um, our logo that is going to go on the wall in the demo room. So I've got a few steps here that I need to do. Uh, the first thing, I'm going to be using uh, eighth inch, uh, it's actually slightly less than eighth inch, it's dye bond material, which has an aluminum face on the front, a white aluminum face on the back, and then a, a PVC core, and it's sandwiched together. It's great material for uh, making silhouette signs like this, and it has a nice aluminum uh, look on the front, so it, there's really no finishing that you need to do. Now, the thing is, is what I want to do in this video is, is uh, or in this project is I, I want the letters to stand off from the wall slightly. And normally when you use standoffs on the wall, you have to have uh, holes drilled through the front and they, they make special sign standoffs. In this case, we're using um, a new standoff that we're gonna be selling here. It's actually a clear uh, plastic standoff that has an adhesive that sticks to the back and you screw uh, a receptacle to the wall and there's a button that sticks to the letter and they just snap in place. Well, in order to do this properly, what I need to do is I need to make sure that the spacing for the letters is accurate. And then I also need to make sure that where I am going to stick the buttons on the back of the letter, that I have a template that goes on the wall that matches up with that so that I can put the uh, plastic caps that go on the wall, they, they go in with a screw. I need to make sure they're in the right spot so that when I put the letters on, everything lines up perfectly. So here's our logo, and this is basically what I'm starting with. Now, uh, I, I don't really have to do a whole lot here. I am going to make some marks on the back side of the letter. So on the back of the die bond, what I'm going to end up doing here is I, the first thing I want to do on all of this is flip this, this whole thing over, okay? Because I need every all the work I'm going to do is on the back. I want to actually use an engraving point and engrave targets on the back of each letter where the adhesive button is going to go. And then I want to also be able to cut the letters out from the back. I don't want to make this a two-sided project and make it really complicated. So uh, what I'm going to do first is basically flip this uh, over so that I'm working on the back side. Okay. Uh, and the next thing I need to do is I need to add targets to all the letters. And then I want to take the letters and I want to use the nesting feature in VCarve Pro to minimize the uh, waste of material that I'm going to have. So what I'm going to do uh, here next is I have some layers already set up. And uh, let's see here. The letters are nested. This is the nesting letter uh, set up. Now what I did was I made a note here on the file that the uh, actual... Um, uh, job size for this is 48 by 20 because I'm going to have to change the job size a few times depending on what I'm doing on this job. So for the uh, job size here, I'm basically going to uh, resize this to 48 by um, 20. And you can see now, uh, actually it looks like, yeah, okay, I know what I did. I had one letter that was bad um, earlier and I had this R right here, I had to redo it. So I just stuck it up there. So I'm just gonna delete that. All right, so basically what I've got here is, uh, here's all the backside of the letters. And then I made these targets, which is basically a circle that's the exact diameter of the plastic button. And then I put a target on it so that I know later on, you'll see this is where the uh, screw is gonna go on the paper template that goes on the wall, okay? So the first thing I wanna do here is simply run an engraving uh, toolpath. We have a engraving point that you actually can put in a spindle, uh, just make sure the spindle's not on uh, so it, when the job runs, so it's not spinning, and it's a spring-loaded uh, carbide tip engraving point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that to basically scratch this target into the back of every letter. Then I'm gonna switch over to a two-flute straight bit, and I'm gonna cut out each of the letters from the die bond, again, from the back side. Okay, so I use the nesting feature here and 
I wanted to do this so I minimize uh, waste. So out of a four by eight sheet, I'm only using 20 inches of it. Now, the other thing I did when I went into nesting, I wanted to make sure that I did not check rotate parts and I didn't check mirror parts and uh, I don't need to allow them inside other parts. The reason I don't want to rotate them or I don't want to mirror them is because there's a grain to the aluminum. Uh, it's a brushed aluminum and there's a grain to it on the sheet. And I want to make sure that all the, the grain on all the letters is going in the same direction. If I were to click rotate parts to find best fit, then Vetric would automatically rotate everything to, to take up the least space possible. So by unchecking that, I make sure all the letters are nested. So I'm, I'm saving space, but they're all in a vertical uh, layout here. Okay, so that, that was the, that's the first tip. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is basically set up a, a profile toolpath after I engrave the uh, targets on the back of each letter. I'm going to run uh, an eighth inch uh, straight flute I'm on a plastic bit and I'm going to cut all the letters out. Then what I'm going to do from there is I need to now make my paper templates. Uh, so I need to go back and have something that I can put on the wall that I can transfer the center of the targets to where the screws are going to go. Okay, so what I did there was I have this layout, which I made a note that is 92 by 12. So I'm going to change my size here to 12 wide by 92 tall. And now you can see what that's going to look like. So basically what I did here was I laid the letters out according to my original logo. Basically, I took this and rotated it 90 degrees, created a new layer. And I have all of the letters here and I have the targets uh, set up here. What I also did was I drew, I drew two uh, vertical lines, one here and one here. And those lines are basically, they serve no other purpose other than to give me a reference line to put a level on. So when I go ahead and put this template on the wall, I can make sure that it's completely level. Uh, conversely, I also put this center line right here, and this is actually easy to do. Just draw a line going across, go over here to align tools, uh, go to align material vertically, and it automatically puts it in the center of the project. So I know that this line is the exact center of the, these letters uh, and the sign on the wall. So this line is going to get drawn as well. And, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the room. I'm going to find a center point. I'm going to line this line up with that center point. Then I'm going to put a level on one of these uh, longer lines here. Make sure the template is level. I'm going to hold it to the wall with some masking tape and then come back in and screw all of the receptacle caps to the center of the targets, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a plotting pen on my uh, CNC, and we have an, a bracket attachment that allows us to put interchangeable attachments on a production-grade CNC. So what we're doing is we're putting a plotting pen attachment. That plotting pen is actually spring-loaded. So what you do, so if your work surface isn't perfectly level, uh, which, in which case the spoil board I'm using is, I know is not because I've been using it on a ton of different projects. Uh, but that floating point will allow positive contact with the paper at all times. So I bought a, on Amazon a roll of uh, white paper that's 12 inches uh, wide by I think 75 feet long. And what I'm going to do is just basically tape that paper onto the machine and then roll it out. Make sure it's relatively... Um, vertical or, or, or I, I guess parallel to the y-axis as close as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because I do have a margin on either side and that's another reason why I've got these vertical lines here. If the paper is not perfectly straight or perfectly parallel with the y-axis, uh, then you can't use the edge of the paper on a, uh, on a level. So you would use these lines. So you could be skewed quite a bit and it'll still work, work perfectly. Now that that's done, I'm, I'm basically going to go ahead and plot out all these, all these letters and the targets on there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to transfer it to the wall. When I put it on the wall, I want to make sure uh, that I, I go ahead and use a, a pin. I'm going to put a, like a thumbtack right on the C here in the center because it's very close to the center line. And then I can go ahead and use a level and level the uh, paper against one of these lines. Then I'll use masking tape to hold it flat. And then I can go back and I can add all of the, uh, the plastic caps on the wall. Okay, so that takes care of the letters. 
Now the next part of this is I have the uh, logo, which this is the logo here, and I made a note 24 by 36, so I'm gonna change this size again to 24 by 36. So now you can see what that looks like. And what I did again was I, I took the logo from here and basically made sure it's exactly the same size. I flipped it over. Uh, right now, what you're looking at the logo here is the back side. But when you're doing the paper template, you actually want to be looking at the front side of the letter. So I flipped it back to its original position, and that's what I'm looking at here. Now, I drew targets on these as well because this is two halves of the logo. So I've got five different targets to ensure that it sits nice and flush on the wall and it doesn't bow or, or, uh, or anything. So that's why I space these targets where they are. Now I drew some other lines here. I have this uh, horizontal line here, which is my level line. So that's where I'll actually put the level to make sure that, that this uh, is, is level and, and uh, perpendicular to the letters. I have a horizontal line. This is my line that I'm going to line up with the horizontal line from the paper template on the letters to make sure that this part of the logo is centered. And then I have this line here. This line is actually going to line up with the top of the letters uh, that, that I have on the paper template down below. So that gives me the correct spacing vertically. All right. So now all I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and um, after I've cut out the uh, the, these two halves of this logo, I'm going to go ahead and put some 24 inch wide paper, which I also got on a roll from Amazon. I'm going to roll that out onto my spoil board. The spoil board can be back in the original position. It doesn't really matter at this point because it's only 36 inches long. I'm going to zero off to the lower left corner and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot this out on a piece of paper. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to place this template on the wall above the paper template for the uh, letters and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned vertically and I'm going to put a level on here make sure it's it's level horizontally uh, Then I'll put some tape masking tape on the walls and I'll come back and I will screw in all of the tar of the uh, plastic caps on these targets and Then the last thing I have to do really is just uh, take the letters uh, put the adhesive on the back of the buttons and stick them to the targets on the letter and then once all the caps are screwed into the wall, I can simply just snap the letters in place and tear the paper out. And voila, I have a uh, perfectly aligned sign. Everything is level, spaced out properly. Uh, it was zero hassle whatsoever. I didn't have to measure anything other than the center point of the room. And uh, making paper templates using a plotting pen is, is a great uh idea if you can do it on your machine because you can cut the letters then you can switch you, uh, like in this case I used an engraving point to do the targets and then I switched again to a plotting pen and paper to make the paper templates to hang this thing on the wall so all in all it's a it was a pretty cool project I just want to make a quick tip video to show you if you have the ability to put a plotting pen on your CNC and you do any kind of individual sign components or individual letters for signs and you're struggling with the best way to lay them out on uh, on your wall. Now, I suppose you could uh, print this out and split it up in eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper and then just kind of tape those up against the wall. But this is so much easier to just be able to roll one continuous piece out. You know everything is spaced. I'm using the same file for everything. So there's no chance for anything to be deviated. Uh, and it's just going to work out perfectly. So I hope you find this tip helpful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in this video below. If you have not uh, already subscribed to this channel, please uh, subscribe. So every time I release a new video, which is a few a week, you'll be the first to be notified. And uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button below.